drum roll, please. All right. Wow, what a year. I mean, it seems amazing that it's already been a whole year. I mean, here we are. I remember, it seems like just yesterday, when we were pulling out of our driveway and Alice was crying and trying to talk to the camera. <laughs> and it was just heart-wrenching. Oh, memories. You know? All right. Well, we have done it. We are pulling out of our driveway for the very last time. And we are on our way for our big adventures. <laughs> we just said goodbye to Heather. Which was hard. Which was hard. Of course. Somebody still teary-eyed. Said goodbye to Craig last night. Wow. A year's already gone by. So today we're going to do maybe a little bit longer video than normal. But we want to give you a round out of our one year anniversary of RV living full time. We want to talk about some of the things that we really like about it. Some of the good decisions we made, maybe some of the bad decisions we've made, some of the friends we've made, how we, you, you made know. bad decisions, not me. <laughs> well, maybe. One or two. Anyway. <laughs> we want to talk about some, maybe some of the good purchases that we made, maybe one or two things that we purchased that we really didn't need. Yeah. Um, and some of the learning experience, because every day you should be learning something new. Yes. And you're good at learning things new, and I let you learn them and then teach me. Sometimes I learn them the hard way though, and that's not a lot That is of fun. true. <laughs> but uh, so if you're new to our channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, ring the little bell so you'll get notifications, and hey, leave us a comment and let us right. know what you think about our channel because we're really striving to make our RV living and RV lifestyle something to help people, and we really enjoy hearing from our viewers. So let's start out with some of the big things we've learned. Well, I think the first thing that we learned is that we don't need 2,400 square feet and all of that stuff to go with it. We have been very happy with our 400 square foot house here and what we have inside. We sold everything except for a few things that we have given to our children, as all parents do. You just pass it down, right? We just right. did it early. Um, and we've learned that making these memories have been so worth it right memories are gonna last forever the stuff that we clung on to in the house not so much um, what do we miss the most <sighs> my kids seeing my kids all the time I knew that was gonna be a really easy <laughs> one for her um, we're a little bit different you know I mean I miss my family but I kind of got used to missing my family yeah. Between being in the military, having been a police officer and working crazy hours, there are days you go hardly ever see your family when you're a cop. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the work I did over in Iraq. You know, in three and a half years, I was gone more than I was home by far. So I kind of got used to being away from family. So it hasn't affected me that much. And... They're coming and visiting us anyway. They do. I mean... We've seen Heather... We've seen Heather twice. Yes. And, and Craig once. Craig once. And my and dad a couple of times. Alice's dad's been here a couple of times. So, in some cases, we're getting to see some family more than yep. we did before. Yep. For sure. And we have plans in a week to go to Central California and spend more time with Alice's family. So, there really is something to be said about the RV community. There's a lot to be said about the RV yep. community. And you, you hear about it a lot if you watch YouTube. People talk about how you know they get friends or mm -hmm. make friends and all that stuff as they're traveling. And during the past year, Alice and I have made some great friends. Right, yeah. And even just in parks, even if you don't keep them as friends, when you're in a park, people are so friendly. Right. You almost feel like friends for while you're there at the park. And maybe one day you might meet up with them again. Right. And then there's also the RV forums. You know, I'm on probably four or five different RV forums on Facebook. And I try to help people as much as I can because people are posing questions. How do I? Can you help me with? So I try and help them through the comment section and give them the best advice I can through my experience. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, it's even the forums is kind of like a friendly community where you can go and interact with people and learn how to live full time in an RV. Right. Well, then you have friend, um, the Instagram and the Facebook, right. and you feel like I don't know about you, but I feel like. Uh, the people on Instagram are like friends, and I would hope that one day that we would be in the same place where we could meet up, um, right. and eventually maybe we will. So during the past year, we spent most of the time work camping. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't seen our video on work camping yet, we'll put a link in above. Um, we discussed what we liked and didn't like about work camping in that video, and I think we gave some really good information that if you're considering work camping that you should take the opportunity to go and watch that video right. but for us you know work camping was great we made really good friends friends yeah. that we'll probably have for a lifetime right and we're actually going to make plans to go and see them again this summer and spend a couple of weeks right and we have plans maybe to meet up with one of them right here where we're at in Southern California mm -hmm. um, if his plans go well if his plans <laughs> go well he'll be here just a couple days before we pull out and we're gonna meet up for dinner so work camping was a great experience for us, and it's still something that we could potentially fall back on later on if we needed to. Right. So you ask, what would we do differently? Right. Nothing. After a year, what would you do different? Nothing. 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 I don't think there's been any decisions that we've made or anything that we've done that we truly would... Wish we would have done differently? Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, no. I think the decision to get rid of our stuff get the trailer, move out, and start this. Yeah. Adventure was a good decision. And at this point in time, I have no regrets. No, and I'm ready to just keep on going. Right. During the past year, we did upgrade trailers. It's pretty early in the, la in the past year, actually. <laughs> um, we did a video on that, on our decision-making process and different things that we discussed. Uh, making the decision to do this. So I'll link that video up above. Uh, why did we upgrade? When we first left Alaska, the trailer we were in, we were certain was gonna be enough. It was mm -hmm. a 26 foot uh, tow behind trailer um, that we absolutely loved for the three years that we had it before we moved into full timing. But we quickly realized that the layout of that trailer was not necessarily good for us in a full-time yeah. capacity. No, I don't think the length of it was that bad. I think it was just the layout that right. we had chosen. And being in Alaska, you're limited on right. what they have up there. And so we thought we chose what was best for us at the time, but definitely not for full-time. So we're definitely happy that we have made the decision to purchase something a little bit larger than what we had. A little bit larger. All right, double the size. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. So Almost. <laughs> we went from a little one to a great big trailer. Um, but I can't say that we have had any regrets about it. Our no. trailer is almost 42 feet long. And we haven't really had any problems getting into campgrounds with it. Um, and we haven't had any problems getting out of campgrounds with it. One campground when we were traveling out of... Montana down to Utah was scary it was scary uh, a little tight but otherwise we've had no issues with the overall length we've learned to make better decisions earlier about fuel stops and things like that um, so better planning because of the size of the trailer yeah and it's not that hard to do no it's not so we're a little over halfway through, so now is a great time that if you haven't yet, hit that like button and let us know that you enjoyed this video. Maybe consider what you're going to put in the comment section and let us know what you think. Are you considering going full-time? Are you already full-time? Are you having the same kind of issues and feelings that we have about being full-time? What kind of experiences full-time have you had? And don't forget to subscribe. Absolutely. Now, on to the one thing. My biggest mistake was this year was just a couple <laughs> weeks ago. It's kind of hard to talk about because it hurts so bad. <laughs> I dinged my trailer. Okay, so almost one year 
with this trailer and no scratches until today. Took it to get new tires on and based on the configuration of the tire shop, you gotta go in the front, drive around the building and park on the side of the building so they can work on your tires. Now, you got the building, you got a parking area and you've got a hurricane fence. So I was more worried, because it's pretty tight, I was more worried about catching the building as I got out. Alice and I were both in a rush because the whole thing was running longer than it, it was scheduled to, so we were in a rush. We didn't take the walkie-talkies out, didn't call each other on a cell phone, nothing. So she's 45 feet back behind the trailer, spotting me, and I, my tail swing swung out and caught the corner of the fence post. So now I'm trying to do a quick repair to this corner piece, this corner rail that was bent out and cockeyed and twisted. Been working on it for about an hour. Um, been using pliers and trying to bend it, kind of get it back into shape. So I can at the very least screw it back on as a temporary fix because I'm pretty sure that if I get this piece of corner molding, just it's a straight piece, so I would think it'd be fairly common to have. So if I can get this piece of corner molding, I should be able to do the fix myself and not even have to worry about bringing the insurance companies in. So I guess, oh, and I also lost the tail light. Um, so moral of the story, don't rush. It's always when you're in a rush that something goes wrong. Well, temporary repair is done. Um, doesn't look too bad. The worst part is where that little chunk of fiberglass came off. We'll have to get a much better repair on that at a later date, but otherwise the metal is looking pretty good. Still got a tail light that I need to replace on the side or a marker light. Um, otherwise not bad. I think it'll be weather tight. We use some clear silicone to seal it back up. And once I get this piece, we'll take it off completely, clean it all up, and make a better repair. So, cool beans. That's the biggest mistake that we've had in the past year. Um, I think for a year, if that's all we have, we are doing good. Not yeah, on wood. Considering... <laughs> yeah. Please, does this count as wood, I hope? It's underneath, hun. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so changing the subject a wee bit from our little boo-boo, mm. we want to tell you five things that at this point in time I don't think I could live without in our RV life. Right. And we'll put these five things in the description below as our... Amazon affiliate store make it easy for you to find it click on the link and you'll be able to go to it and make the purchase if you want um, It won't cost you anything extra, but we get just a slight commission on your purchase um, I'm gonna start out with the water softener. I tell you when you have hair long hair like I do and you have hard water, you end up with hair out here, and I am not kidding, and okay. you have to get it cut all the time. The water softener has been the best thing ever, and I have probably sold it to like four different people through our RV life and stopping at the different RVs and talking about the hard water and stuff. Lifesaver. Don't ever go without a water softener. Everything she said, and it's going to save your coffee pots, too. Right. Because that was, that was one of the things that we had noticed, is like every couple of weeks when we were in Montana, our coffee pot was coming up with clean me, clean me, clean me. Yeah. And it was because the water was so hard. Yeah. And so when we got the water softener, it changed everything. Everything. You know, soft water makes your soaps work better. Everything just works better with a water softener. So right. I would seriously say... I will never own an RV and not have a water softener. So talking about the coffee maker, if you think about what it does to a coffee maker, what does it do to the pipes, or the tubes right. in your... In your heating in your coil, coil and your water heater and stuff exactly. like that. So I mean, think about that kind of stuff and really consider a water softener. Right. 
And so another thing is, which came in extremely handy, I think I've said it once before. Oh yeah. TPMX. Oh yeah. Tire it pressure us. management system. I had to fight with Alice a little bit to get her to let me spend the money to buy it before we left Montana. He did. <laughs> but it was on like day two of our trip out of Montana yes. that the alarm on the TPMS went off and we were able to get to the side of the road and had a flat tire because of a nail. We were able to change the tire with zero damage right. to the trailer. It just took a little bit of our time to change the tire. Yep. So that was definitely big time. The other thing that we've done is um, the vacuum cleaner. Right. I mean, you're having such a small space. You're in and out all the time. There's only one entry, uh, whether you're in dirt or grass. Right now we're in grass and it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm vacuuming like three times a day right. because it's kind of dry, you know, and so, you know, whether you have the, the grass or the dirt, you got to constantly clean. And what's better than a small portable vacuum cleaner? That was the best gift I have ever received. We have a Dyson. It's a Dyson stick vac. It's cordless, so you can plug it in, charge it. It stores easily yep. out of the way. It's very easy to get out of the way and it works great. Right. We'll never own a trailer without one of these vacuums again. Exactly. Yeah, total lifesaver. And then, of course, is one of Alice's favorites. The Blackstone Griddle. <sighs> that griddle makes the best hamburgers ever. Or is it Gordon? <laughs> it's Gordon with the Blackstone. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, the Blackstone Griddle has been phenomenal. We do cook in the trailer. Um, but we do probably 70% or more of our cooking outside. Yeah. And, you know, I've cooked breakfast, lunch, dinner, all in the same day on the Blackstone. Yeah. Now I also have a small barbecue grill, but that's just an occasional. I decided I didn't want to throw it away when I first got the Blackstone because I wasn't sure how much I was going to like it. He was this close to throwing that thing away and I'm like, well, you might want to wait for a couple of months to see. But since we, we have, have it. since we have the extra space, it's easy to carry along with us for those days, maybe when I want a nice, thick, juicy steak or something. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the other thing is Alice just recently did a video on kitchen organization. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we definitely can't live without. And that's all the different organization bins that she has found on Amazon. Um, we use them in our refrigerator, we use them in our cupboards, we use them in our pantry. Um, we use them, we even have the, the larger storage boxes in the, what we call the belly and the butt, it, which is our storage compartments outside. Uh, I think, you know, without the storage uh, containers that we have purchased, it would take us a long time to get ready to go on our move days. And we could literally be packed up in a half an hour 45 minutes and we're out of here just because of all of the different storage containers and stuff that we have purchased um, to make it that that part of our life easy so now those are our favorite purchases most of them are pretty small ticket items nothing yeah. major um, so now let's talk about probably the biggest waste of money potentially we don't know for sure yet we don't know for sure um, and that's our extended warranty when we did buy the new trailer we decided to go ahead and buy an extended warranty it wasn't extremely expensive but it still right now i did kind of wheel and deal them a little bit they wanted to give us four years i got them to extend it out for six years for the same price <laughs> i think it was a waste of money because most of the stuff that we're going to need to fix hopefully i'll be able to fix um and it because it's quicker we all know if you take a trailer right. in for a warranty item you can be there for weeks or months right and we can't do that and of course. we can't do that with the lifestyle that we live so most of the repairs that need to be done we need to do ourselves or have a mobile tech come out and do it um, it's not most things aren't that hard or complicated so I think the warranty is probably going to be one yep. of those that we're like, eh, probably shouldn't have done it. We've gone to 10 national parks. Uh, we were in two countries during this year. 
And we have been in, is it six or eight different states this year? Eight. Eight different states during the past year. So now... And all of it's been through COVID, which has been tough right. on some areas. So now, let's talk about this coming year. Yeah. There's major plans. Major. As promised. So in about two weeks, we will be in Central California attending a f wedding. And then right after the wedding, we're packing our trailer up and we are headed for North Carolina. My dad and my brothers live in North Carolina. It's been a couple years since I've been able to see them because Alaska to North Carolina is a big deal. But we're going to go spend a couple weeks in North Carolina. If anybody knows of a good RV park in and around Oxford, Henderson, or Stovall, North Carolina... <laughs> Leave a comment below because we're still looking for an we, RV park. And we're struggling a little bit on trying to find something to stay in. I really don't want to be an hour away from where my dad's at and go to Raleigh-Durham area, but I will if I have to. Um, so after spending a couple weeks in North Carolina, we're going to make our way north. We have some friends, Jim and Sherry. You may remember them if you ever watched our white water rafting video at Glacier National Park. Or our Wild Horse Island. Or our Wild Horse Island video. Um, we worked with them in Montana. They're taking a job in New Hampshire this summer, so we're going to go and visit them. A couple of weeks in Lake Sunapee in New Hampshire. And we still have some friends in New Hampshire that we're going to visit from when we used to live there. When we're done with New Hampshire, we're making our way to Maine, and we're going to travel the coast of Maine for the summer. And, and you know, I've already made reservations for the big RV show in Hershey, Pennsylvania in September. Just waiting for those tickets to go on sale so we can purchase the tickets to go into the RV park. Because Heather's coming to visit at right. that time. Heather's going to fly out to Maine, and we're going to pick her up. And she's going to the Hershey show with us because Heather she's wants to interested. find a trailer. <laughs> um, so she wants to go to an RV show. We also have friends in Pennsylvania. So we're going to visit with some friends in yeah. Pennsylvania as well. And right now we are talking about wintering in Georgia, Florida, Alabama shores, Tennessee, somewhere around that area. Yeah. So it should be a lot of fun. So that's kind of like our next year in review. Right? Is, that's <laughs> going to get you almost all the way to spring. But of course, one of the things that's great about this lifestyle, things change. Things change. And that's okay because my home's on wheels and I can go where I want to go when I want to go there. You just have to be flexible. That's right. <laughs> So again, we hope you like this video. Don't forget, before you leave, give us a comment, give us that thumbs up, and ring that notification bell. That way you can keep up with us on our moves. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I'm thinking. Okay, you think. I'm good at thinking. I need like a kazoo or one of those horns. Do the motion and then find the sound. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> However it goes, because when I'm editing, it's too late to create okay. new options. Go for it. Do your horn. Oh, do the horn? Right. <laughs> anyway, anyway, it's been a whole year. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing how fast time's gone by.